Hi everyone, welcome again to Vet Talks. I'm Diana Teixeira and in this Vet Talk I will focus on a little explored question about recurrent laryngeal neuropathy. Is ultrasonography an important method for the diagnosis and treatment of this disease or not? Recurrent laryngeal neuropathy is the most frequent disease of the superior airways in horses and one of the, the major causes of performance loss. Recurrent laryngeal neuropathy is by definition a mononeuropathy affecting the recurrent laryngeal nerves, especially the left one, which leads to the atrophy of the intrinsic muscles of the larynx and which in turn leads to the loss of the abduction and abduction capacity of the arytenoid cartilages. As we can observe here, there is a macroscopic loss um, of the characteristic symmetry between the arytenoid cartilages, comparing with this image of the normal anatomy of the larynx. Diagnosis of this disease may be made by association of clinical signs, physical examination and endoscopy, which can be uh, standing or dynamic. The standing endoscopy allows to identify more severe grades and the dynamic one allows to perform an exam during exercise and to identify less severe grades. However, neither static nor dynamic endoscopy made it possible to evaluate the state of the intrinsic structures of the larynx, such as the muscles. Laryngeal ultrasonography is a simple, portable, accessible, cheap and paleness method which can be used to diagnose recurrent laryngeal neuropathy by assessing the grade of atrophy of the cricoarytenoidus dorsalis muscle and cricoarytenoidus lateralis muscle, uh, which will determine the success of treatments that depend on their activity. Studies have been performed for over 50 years. However, due to the complexity of establishing the abductor and adductor functions of the arytenoid cartilage, there is still no perfect treatment. In the bibliography, we can find laryngoplasty, laryngeal reinnervation, ventriculectomy, cordectomy, partial and total arytenoidectomy, and tracheostomy. Also, a new technique is being developed, the dynamic neuroprosthesis, which consists of the combination between laryngoplasty and laryngeal renervation. The objectives of the study performed were to evaluate the importance of ultrasonography as diagnostic technique in the recurrent laryngeal neuropathy, study the role of echography for the selection of the most accurate surgical treatment for each case and analyze the treatment selection and its surgical uh, success. A population of 76 horses with recurrent laryngeal neuropathy was retrospectively studied. All horses were referred after being diagnosed with recurrent laryngeal neuropathy by the referring veterinarians. Diagnosis was confirmed endoscopically and ultrasonographically. The Evermeyer system was used for grading the standing endoscopy and the modified Rockstraw system for the dynamic endoscopy. All the animals were submitted to standing endoscopy, but those that presented a grade 4 in this phase passed directly to ultrasound without being submitted to dynamic endoscopy. All horses in the study were submitted to ultrasound. The classification system used was established by Dr. Fabrice Rossignol and includes four grades of muscle atrophy, from the least to the most severe. We have mild, moderate, significant and severe. In the mild, we have the muscle almost normal in terms of volume and ultrasonography uh, aspects. There are some signs of heterogeneity of the muscle fibers at the most callo aspect mostly. And as we can see in these images on the right side, the animal have the grade one. In the moderate group, we can observe heterogeneity of the uh, cricoritnoideus dorsalis muscle with spots of atrophy. However, there is the persistence of a good muscular uh, volume. In this, 
significant degree, we have significant muscle atrophy with global loss of muscle volume and fibrosis, especially caudally. There are still sound muscle, muscle fibers, uh, especially at the most caudal aspect. In a severe degree, there is already total atrophy of the cricoarytinoideus. Uh, dorsalis muscle, no muscle fibers are left at the ultrasound, as, and we can see an example of this grade in the images on the bottom right that was a uh, grade 4. The area and diameter for each of the dorsal cricoarytinoideus muscles are marked, and comparing the animal with the grade 1 and the animal with the grade 4, as well as the right and left side of the animal with grade 4, Four, uh, we can see in the letter a narrower, smaller, and more hyperchondrogenic muscle on the left side than on the right. After the echographic evaluation, the surgical technique was selected, choosing between laryngoplasty, dynamic neuroprosthesis, and laryngo laryngeal uh, renovation. To confirm the success of this choice, satisfaction surveys were carried out to the tutors of the horses. However, bearing in mind that this evaluation may not be as objective as we would like it to be, uh, standing and dynamic endoscopies were performed post-surgically, as well as the recording of the resolution or not of the clinical signs. Moving on to the results, through standing endoscopy, the grades 1 and 2 were absent, and the most cases presented grade 4. Dynamic endoscopy of 42 animals with grades 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 revealed mostly grades C, followed by grades D, and only 3 grades B. On ultrasound, the majority presented a significant degree of atrophy, followed by severe, moderate, and finally mild. There was a predominance of the two most severe degrees of the muscular atrophy. Comparing the grades of the standing and dynamic endoscopies with the ultrasound grades in an attempt to understand whether or not there was an agreement between them, we found some different concordance rates. Um, for, um, uh, we found a concordance rate for um, 34.2 between the grades 4 of standing endoscopy, that were 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the rate of 47.37 when comparing the grades we actually obtained for standing endoscopy in this study, that were 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3, and 4. For dynamic endoscopy, we found a concordance rate of 54.17 which uh, with the grades of the ultrasounds that were mild, uh, moderate, uh, significant and severe. From another perspective, studies of muscle immunohistochemistry analysis have concluded that horses with a low degree of recurrent laryngeal neuropathy showed compensatory hyperatrophy of the remaining muscle fibers and thus manifested a subclinical condition of the disease, which once again explains why the information given by the ultrasound, which actually directly assesses the muscles, does not correspond 100% to that given by endoscopy, which assesses the movement of the cartilages that depends on the muscular activity by itself. Now exploring the treatment selected for each of the degrees of atrophy of the dorsal cricoarid nodal muscle for the mild degree, we found that renervation came first and dynamic neuroprosthesis came second. For the moderate degree, we had dynamic neuroprosthesis in first place, renervation in second place, and laryngoplasty with only 10% with a clear predominance of laryngeal renovation and dynamic neuroprosthesis techniques in these two degrees of muscular atrophy. In this case, it is important to mention that the state of atrophy of the dorsal cricoarinodeus muscle has not, was not the only criteria that influenced the choice of treatment. 
Here, we observe the tendency to avoid laryngeal innervation because of its high recovery time. For the significant grades, dynamic neural processes came first, laryngoplasty came second, and in 8% of the cases, laryngeal innervation was still chosen. Finally, in severe degree, we had a predominance of laryngoplasty. However, surprisingly, there was a percentage of 10% of laryngeal renovations. In these cases, we have observed in younger horses, there is a greater tendency to try the laryngeal renovation. Regarding the totality of selected treatments, what can be seen is that for the most of surgeries, the new dynamic neuroprosthesis technique was selected, followed by laryngoplasty and finally laryngeal renovation. Laryngoplasty was the surgery with the highest number of complications and renovation was the one with the lowest. Neuroprosthesis, as expected, although its complications have not yet been described, had an intermediate percentage compared to the other two techniques. For the three surgical techniques, the most frequent complication was dysphagia, followed by cough, and finally serum. In order to understand if the cho choice of technique was the most correct one, uh, were used three different methods, as I mentioned before. And the degree of tutor's post treatment satisfaction was mostly maximum. In the postoperative endoscopies, ni neither grade one nor grade five were found, which means that was neither exaggerated or insufficient abduction. Still, three horses that presented grade four in the preoperative standing endoscopy maintained the grade four um, in the postoperative. It was verified that these three horses presented the severe grade in the ultrasonography, which reinforces the need for an early diagnosis to guarantee the success in the treatment, ideally even in the subclinical form of the disease. Finally, laryngoplasty proved to be the most effective technique for solving inspirational noise and laryngeal renovation the least. As for the resolution of exercise intolerance, the technique that stood out was dynamic neuroprosthesis, and the one that solved the least was again the laryngeal renovation. Coming back to the initial question, is ultrasonography an important method for the diagnosis and treatment selection for recurrent laryngeal neuropathy or not? After this study, the answer is yes. Ultrasound is important. Firstly, because all the horses presented some degree of atrophy, being registered a majority of cases of significant and severe atrophy. Echography also presented a higher concordancy with dynamic endoscopy than with standing endoscopy. Furthermore, echography had potential for diagnosis of dynamic alterations induced by recurrent laryngeal neuropathy, being a subuse technique in the staging of this disease. On the other side, the grades of the muscle atrophy influenced the treatment selection indeed. Through echography, it was possible in 66% uh, of the cases to choose more physiological solutions. And even though the DNP is a recent technique, its, its complications and success rates are similar to the ones registered for lingoplasty and laryngeal renovation. Finally, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Mario Tuiu, Dr. Faris Rossignol, Dr. Ian Campos, Dr. Ulrich Marie, all the referring veterinarians, um, and also all the tutors that participated in the first surgery survey. Thank you so much for your interest in this bad talk, and I wish you a great day.